What's up, guys? They say I have to hook you in the first five seconds, so... Yo, TikTok. You might be a beginner. You might have just bought some studio lights, or you might be thinking of buying some studio lights. In today's video, I'm gonna break the intimidation to studio lighting. I'm gonna show you easy one light setups for you to do in the studio or in your house if you don't have a studio to shoot in. We're gonna go through Rembrandt lighting. We're gonna go through butterfly lighting. We're gonna do it right now. Let's go. What's up guys? We're here to talk about studio strobes. The thing about studio strobes is every studio light, whether you are shooting with Ellen Chrome or Profoto or Braun Color or Godox, if you're using studio strobes, they all have the same settings. They have a power button on off. They also have a modeling light button on off. You can see the modeling light in the background, turning that modeling light down, off, back on. And they also have power, power up and power down. The thing that's incredible about the way that flashes are able to be adjusted, is you can drop them down in tenths of stops or 30 seconds of stops. And this kind of control, in combination with a light meter, you're able to really, really tune your photography. We have the lovely Hannah on set. I'm going to show you what I do when I'm shooting a model in studio. And I'm also gonna demonstrate how easy it is and how creative you can get with one light. Softbox, raw. All right, let's get into it. First main light here. Now we are doing a one light setup with Hannah. Hannah Banana, you feeling good? You're looking fly. All right, so one main light. What I want you to watch is because I'm shooting primarily headshots, again, I wouldn't normally be shooting horizontal, but I am choosing to shoot horizontal just so you can see light. The next thing that I think that is super crucial that not enough photographers do, this is called the shooting plane, meaning this is the line that me, the photographer, that I'm allowed to go up and down. This is called the subject plane. I have a softbox here so I can show you in a second what softbox light looks like. Okie doke. So I'm exactly on this plane. My light is exactly on this plane. It's above her. Now I want you to look at her face and you see how it's nice and even. There's nice shadows under here. It looks perfect. All right, let's pop a shot and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, we're gonna take a reading. This is all done automatically. You can see here, this is a light meter. I have it set for ISO 100. It's on non-cord at, watch. That's saying 1.40, but I'm back here. I'm behind the light. So let's go in front of the light. And we'll take a flash reading. Always take a light meter reading under the chin aimed at camera. And it is giving us 11.2. That is 11 and 2 tenths of a stop. So 11 and 2 tenths of a stop is almost 11 and 3 tenths of a stop. 3 tenths is a third. So it's 11 and a third almost because it's 11.2. This trigger we put back on the camera. Good. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm just catching a little bit of my light stand. Do you guys see that? Okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. Love that. Look at me, look here. Good, mouth open, mouth open. Look at the ground for me right here. All right, Hannah, look at me. Great, 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 that's it, that's it. Amazing, Hannah, amazing. This is what you can do with one light. Look at that, the exposure is super clean. Okay, look at me here, look at me here. Beautiful. Now the only issue is that this is a little flat. And the reason is because this height of the light, it's not high enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sky the light more. And again, what I'm using, and the reason that I'm using no modifiers right now, I'm just using the reflector, is so you can actually see the shadows. So you can actually see what the light looks like and what your placement is like, so the placement is actually perfect. I want you to show me just that little head down. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Bring, how about bring your hands in between here? Good, 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 good. Good. So you can see here, I'm coming a lot higher with the light. And you can see it's a lot 
more molded. Show me dead on now again, dead on. Just do this with your hair for me. Good, good, good. Bring your hands up like that and do that again. Good, that's great. Drop your chin a touch. Do that one more time. Mouth open. Good. Let your hair, let your hands down. Beautiful, beautiful. Do this just in the front for me. Do, like just do like this, just to mess your hair in the front a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good. Here, one sec. Yeah, just like that again. Okay. Look at me, look at me. That's great. Chin up for me. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just like that. Beautiful. Oh, that's great. Okay, amazing. You can see the light straight on is so beautiful, but I wanna modify that. So I'm gonna change, I'm gonna move this light out of the way, and then we're gonna move the Godox light in with the softbox. The last light source I was using was almost like a pin because it's a strobe, small source, and it becomes a very sharp light. So right now we're doing the exact opposite. I'm using a massive umbrella and I'm going to sky this umbrella to the same position that it was in the last photograph. Okay, trigger, thank you. These are Profoto lights. I flip between Profoto and Ellen Chrome. I'm gonna take a light meter reading on this. Chin up for me, Dolan. We have to make sure that this angle, which right now isn't hitting her face, it's hitting more her body. So I'm gonna just bring this light just a touch forward so it hits her face just a bit more. We're doubling it to 10. And again, keep in mind this softbox eats a lot of light. Now we're at eight even, 8.01. Here we go. Just show me hands on the hips. Yeah, exactly like that. That's dope. Really strong. Really strong. Yeah. That's great. The light and shadow is pushing right back behind her. And also because it's a diffused light source, we're using a huge softbox. You can see that the shadow just liquefies. You can see the light super even on her face, but it's also boring. I am going to try to make this light a little bit more dynamic. Let's style this shot a little bit. I also, I'm shooting full length. I like that pose. I like it. I'm also shooting full length, so I really want to make it so when I make an 8x10, I'm not losing um, her feet or her hair. My reading was F8 on the duck, correct? That's a little bit hot at F8. Personally, I'm gonna go to F10. F10 looks almost perfect. When it comes to light placement, I usually place the light in like a couple of different areas. But here's a little trick as far as what I call safety zone and extreme zone. Okay, I'm gonna show you this with demonstration on the floor, but the safety zone is anywhere within the extension of your arms that you put the light. So right now, if I put my arm here and grab this light, and the reason that I call this the safety zone is because you cannot fail if you put your light within arm's length of you. Look at me, Hannah, with the light in the safety zone. Beautiful. And you can see that, look how pretty that is. Oh my God, that's amazing. She looks, it looks amazing. Okay, here we go again. Beautiful, Hannah. Okay, you guys have seen Rembrandt lighting. I'm moving the light off of camera axis and I'm going to move beyond what I call the safety zone into the extreme zone. What I'm going to show you is how I find perfect light placement. Where I'm standing right now, do you see how you can see her second eye? So from your position right there on camera, you can see how you see this back eye. Now, if I place the light there and make sure that I can see that rear eye. It's almost like pool. You stand right there, you make sure that the model is looking at camera position. And then now when I come back to camera and drop that photo, you can see, boom, exactly how different that looks compared to the last frame. And again, that's just moving the light. The thing that you're gonna notice and the thing that I'm gonna fix right here is this area of her nose right here. 
Light travels in straight lines. Based on my light position, I need the light to go higher, which is going to push that nose triangle down. And it's going to wrap and hide that little bit of a highlight that's happening here on her nose. But you see, other than that, everything else looks amazing. The only thing that I'm doing is skying the light just a little bit more. Hannah just looking back at camera, just aiming this down just a touch. Beautiful. And now I'm pushing those nose shadows down. Yeah, good. Put your hand on your hip for me. Beautiful. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Head more straight. Head more straight. Beautiful. Put both your hands on your hips. Beautiful. Stay like this. Chin up for me. Beautiful. Look at that. How pretty that is. So now that we've kind of found the sweet spot, okay, exposure on that looks a little low. Look at me here, love. Great. Yeah, that's way better. That's way better. That's way better. I was shooting it a little bit low. There you go. That's way cleaner. Way cleaner. The light's still not exact because I'm still getting a bit of a weird shadow there. So what I'm going to do, look at camera for me. I'm just going to move this way just a touch. I would like to bring in some negative fill. You know my friend Phil, negative fill. In order to stop light from kicking back, we're gonna put this right beside her. Beautiful, look in the hair. Oh, that's so sick. You guys find that helpful? The reason that I had to stop so abruptly is because there was so much content there, I kind of have to break it into multiple videos. Usually people have short attention spans, so the fact that you made it this far, make sure that you drop what camera brand you shoot with in the comments. That would be cool. And I'll see what cameras you shoot with. I shoot with Canon, R5, and six different lenses, all Canon. Um, yeah, if you like this video, consider subscribing. Um, I'm a fun guy. I do live streams three days a week. You can find all that information, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, SteveCardi.com, blah, blah, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Thanks.